Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Anne Blythe in Rose Wilder Lane's Let the Hurricane Roar on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a warm-hearted story by Rose Wilder Lane called Let the Hurricane Roar. You know, the story of America is a thousand stories, each one of them fascinating because each one is different. Yet they all add up to that great and unfinished drama which is America today. In Let the Hurricane Roar, Miss Lane gives us a living fragment of it, with the Dakotas for her background. She tells us of two young people, Charles and Caroline Baker, aged 19 and 17, who set out from back east to find a home in the vast wilderness near the Canadian border. They were very poor, and they had nothing with them but a few domestic articles in their covered wagon. For the part of Caroline, we are glad to have that charming and increasingly popular young actress, Anne Blythe. And now, a word from Frank Goss, before we begin the first act of Let the Hurricane Roar. Hallmark is the name to remember when you want to remember your friends. For birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, holidays, there is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride, for that identifying Hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Rose Wilder Lane's Let the Hurricane Roar, starring Anne Blythe. <laughs> Winter had come to North Dakota when Charles and Caroline arrived to claim their land. Overhead, a cloud rose from the northwest. It hung across the sky for a time with an ominous feathery undercloud. Then, like a solid white wall, the blizzard advanced and the wind began to howl. We're home. We found a home, do you hear me? Look, a hurricane cellar already built for us. What luck, what luck. Oh, darling, darling. Why do we have such good fortune? Tell me, tell me. Oh, Charles, this lovely place, the land, the creek, the plum trees, all this is ours. Oh, no, not so fast. If we live here and work the land, in five years the government will give us title. Oh, but we will. We will. Nothing can stop us. Nothing. And the earth's just crying for wheat. Golden wheat. Golden wheat. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Darling, do you know what wheat will be worth out here? At least a dollar a bushel. Fifty acres. Why, we'll make at least $2,000 our first year. $2,000? Why, you only made $200 the whole year you worked for the railroad. I'll never have to work for them again. Never. I'll never work for anyone but myself again. Do you doubt me? Not even for a second. But $2,000. Oh, that's only the beginning. When we get it... Could we... Could we have a cow? A cow? We'll have a herd of cows. <laughs> Believe me, Horace Greeley knew what he was talking about. Caroline, we're in the West. We're growing up with the greatest country on Earth. And we won't be living like this for long. We'll soon build a house. Oh, a house. A white house with green shutters. A kitchen and a pantry. A dining room. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms? Yes, Charles. Caroline. Uh-huh. When spring comes, our baby will be born. Oh, so beautiful, the baby, Caroline. 
so beautiful like the spring day. He is a handsome boy, isn't he, Mrs. Spencer? Yeah. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, yeah, you, you have so much, so much. But now you and Mr. Spencer are here, only a half mile away from us. It won't be so lonesome anymore. I'm so happy. Oh, Caroline, it's good to see the land is treating you fine. You have such good crop and the new house you will have. It's good, it's good. It will be the same with you and Mr. Spence, and I know. We do not have to wait like you and Charles. We came too late to plan. Yeah. Yeah, we have the bees, the honeybees. Oh, your man has come from town. I will leave now. But soon you will come to visit. Yeah, it's so lonesome. Very soon, I promise. Caroline. Caroline. Oh, Charles, my darling. Mrs. Spenson's such a fine woman. I feel embarrassed that we have so much and they so little. I want to share all our good fortune with them. Oh, of course we'll share, you silly goose. Look in the back of the wagon, Caroline. Charles, all those boxes and the lumber and a, a brand new mowing machine. Oh, Charles, you went into debt. Why not? We're good for it, aren't we? We'll be harvesting the wheat this summer. You've got real glass for the windows. And a doll for the baby. Oh, he'll love it. He'll love it. And this is for you. Oh, Charles. I've never seen anything so beautiful. Lovely brown silk. For a lovely lady who will wear it well. Oh, thank the Lord I'm going to be able to take care of you and the baby the way I ought to. I've never doubted it. Stand here next to the wheat, Caroline. It's grown more than twice your size. Look out as far as you can see. Oh, what a sight. Two more weeks and we'll cut it down. We're rich, Charles. We're rich. I'm so happy that even this awful summer <laughs> heat doesn't bother me. Charles, up in the sky, that cloud coming from the northwest, it's passing over the sun. Who cares? Just look at the wheat. I've never seen anything like this cloud before. It's not dark like a thunderhead or, or the terrible green sky of a cyclone. Why, it's beautiful. Soft as moonbeams. That's funny. And it's racing with the speed of the wind. What is it? I don't know. I, I don't know. Caroline, Charles, the beat, the beat. What are you trying to say, Mrs. Fenton? The beat. Good God Almighty. Oh, Charles. Grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. They're dropping by the thousands. The wheat. The wheat. We've got to save the wheat. They'll eat every grain of it. Fill the tub. Soak blankets. Fire. Maybe fire will save it. We'll fire the wild grass around the wheat. Maybe. Maybe they'll avoid the flames. All the grass is fine. All we can do now is wait and pray. Go on in and rest, Caroline. No. The baby, he might be needing it. My place is here beside you. You can't keep this up, Caroline. You've been at it for 24 hours now. Please. I'm not a baby. Caroline. Caroline, the grasshoppers, they've broken through. Oh, it's no use. It's no use. They'll eat all the wheat. They'll eat all the wheat! It's no use. Charles, it's no use. We're wiped out. I... I can't... The wheat's gone. Every spear... Why don't you say something? I guess if there isn't any wheat, we'll get along without it. We've got along without it so far. How can you stand there and say that? How can you be because so... Because our life has only begun. Begun? Do you know how much money I owe? There's only one thing left for me to do. 
They're building the railroad about 50 miles from here. I'm going to work there. If I can get a job. No, I've got to. So that we'll have money for food and seed. I'll be back in a few days. It's all wrong. All wrong. We don't deserve this suffering. We trusted and we've been betrayed. Oh, it isn't fair. It isn't fair. Oh, Charles. Charles, I'm so glad you're home. Carolina. I can't get a job. There isn't a job in the whole country. Well, you're here. Everybody's looking for work. Half the folks at the town site are, are quitting, getting out. They've stopped building. They're shutting up the stores. At the railroad camp, it's... Caroline, they're begging. They're begging at the cook shanties. Men with families, they... They come along and they have to beg for handouts. Beg? Oh, why don't they live on jackrabbits? There aren't any. The jackrabbits have left the country. The grasshoppers took everything. That hasn't anything to do with us. We aren't going to beg. Oh, aren't we? I'll let you and the baby starve, will I? No, Charles. It can never be that bad. There's hay for the horses and we have potatoes. And this winter you can hunt. Stay here, you mean? We, we would have to have flour and meat. I can't even hunt. I haven't the powder in the shot. And my credit's no good. We'll get along. We always have. We love each other. That isn't enough. We've got to give up the homestead and get out. If we can. Maybe I can get work. If we get far enough east. Give up our homestead? Oh, no. It's all my fault. It's those debts. I, I tell you, I'm licked. I've tried everything. Lofta stopped me at the town site. Said I had to pay him for that lumber. Tried to get him to take it back, and he wouldn't. He said if I tried to skip out without paying, he'd attach the team and wagon. But they hang horse thieves. It's murder leaving a man on foot. He can't do it. Oh, yes, he can. There's a law at the town site now. Then I went to see Henderson about getting powder and shot. He said he was sorry. Sorry? I wasn't asking for charity. He wouldn't give me another cent of credit. Nothing to live on. You and the baby all winter and, and no seed for next year. We mustn't give up. But what else is there to do? Only a defeated man travels east, homeless with a wife and baby. All the way, Charles, you'd know. And every man you'd meet would know that you hadn't been strong enough for the West. I don't care. I don't care. You and the baby need... Why don't you go east just until the winter? How can we make a trip like that and get back in five months? We'll have to travel slow with a baby and we've got to live. Somebody will jump the place as soon as we're gone anyhow. A fine place like this. All the plowed land. Nobody will jump it while I'm here. Caroline, you don't mean I'm you... just as lonesome when you aren't here no matter where you are. If you were working on the railroad or in the east. I won't leave you. I won't ever leave you. I'll be all right. The Spensons are here. And you'll be back before the winter comes. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Let the Hurricane Roar, starring Anne Blight. Frank, what was that you started to tell me about Life magazine before the show? Oh, I asked if you'd seen that picture of the remarkable little lady in this week's life. It's a picture of Grandma Moses, who was 76 years old when she first started to paint pictures. She lived on a farm, and she painted what she saw from her window. Snow-covered hills, families arriving in their sleighs at a little country church. Simple, everyday scenes. Many of her paintings today hang in the leading art galleries of the nation. 
For Grandma Moses has the genius to make us see that everyday life is rich and wonderful. And in this week's Life magazine, you can see Grandma Moses at work on paintings for Hallmark Christmas cards. Grandma Moses has painted especially and exclusively for Hallmark cards. You'll find these cards and other beautiful Christmas cards by foremost Hallmark gallery artists illustrated in this week's Life and on display at leading stores. So go to the friendly store that features Hallmark cards and ask to see Hallmark Grandma Moses cards. The hallmark on the back will tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now, here is James Hilton with the second act of Let the Hurricane Roar, starring Anne Blythe. After Charles had gone east to Iowa to look for work, time stood still for Caroline. The days became long and the nights longer, and the hole in the ground she called home became ugly and forbidding. Then the hot summer passed, and it was late September, and the icy gusts of wind blew over the stripped prairie. And as Caroline arrived at the Svensons, she couldn't help noticing the barren plains for miles and miles, and the sod shanties that had been deserted since the grasshoppers came. Oh, it is Caroline. Oh, good day, Caroline. When will your Charles be coming? Oh, pretty soon. By the end of October, he wrote and told me. Yeah, that's not right that he leave you alone. It's of my own choosing, Mr. Svensson. Thus far, I've managed to get along. Yeah, but why? Why you do not go with him? We love our land, and no one is going to steal it from us. This country, there's no good. Peter. The country's all right, Mr. Svensson. This country, she feeds nobody. She's like a devil, this you country. You can't expect a country to feed you with a spoon. No, but you're the same. The grasshoppers, they will come again. There are no trees, no crops. You can't discourage me, Mr. Svensson. Well, I try. It's no use, Anna. She will not hear. Caroline, we... We are leaving... You're, you're leaving. Yeah. yeah. It's time to go when, when the bee, the little bee, and the big bee kill. I'm afraid I don't understand you. The big bee killed the little bee. They cannot feed them through the winter. There's no blossoms for to make honey in this country, and we cannot stay where not even a bee could live. You're giving up. For good? Yeah. Yeah, for good. You come along with us. Yeah. We take you to your man. I'm not leaving. We've got a stake in our land. We're going to own it in just four more years. Oh, can't you see? You're not only giving up your land, you're giving up a year of your life. Yeah, but let me just lose one year. We cannot afford another. Yeah. You must not stay by yourself. It's bad enough when we are near, but, but now we go. You are alone just with the baby. Good luck, Peter and Anna. Oh. When you leave, will you take me to the town side with you? I'll stay there until Charles comes home. Mrs. Henderson. Yes? I thought you might know where my baby and I could stay. If I could work... Well, goodness knows a little board money'd help out, but you see how it is. Just the one bedroom for the six of us. Mrs. Decker. Yes? I'm looking for a place to stay. Well, where's your husband? He went east to work. He's coming back by the end of October. You could you pay $4 a week? Oh, I couldn't. I'd like to work. Well, you'd be eating for two and everything's high. I can't expect to be warm for nothing. Good morning, Mrs. Insel. I'm looking for work. Well, take my advice and get out of this country. It's full of the meanest, orneriest people. <laughs> Please, Sheriff. Don't you know anyone who can help me? Oh, I wish you did, but you don't. Hey, oh, a uh, letter here for you. A letter? From Charles? Well, I don't know. I don't read other folks' mail. Thank you. Well, why don't you read it? I'll read it later when I'm alone. Would you give me a ride home? Well... I'll pay you a dollar. That's different. Where's home? A hurricane cellar on the prairie. Ten miles from any other human being. (laughs) 
My dear Charles, I've read and reread your letter. Oh, have faith that your broken leg will soon mend. And please, please don't worry about your not being able to come home in October. I don't know why I write you, my love. For there is no way for me to leave the shelter to mail my letters to you. But I must write all the same to tell you that time has become meaningless. And always there's the ache of incompleteness without you. Winter has closed in. Blizzard following blizzard. Oh, Charles, darling, I try so hard to be gay. But I'm frightened and afraid. My darling, November is here. And a blizzard that is in its seventh day is keeping the baby and me imprisoned. Ice has completely enveloped the dugout. I'm burning the furniture to keep the baby warm. It is now December. We are rationing food. What little we have left will soon be gone, and then... There must be a providence, dear Charles. For outside I see a herd of cattle. Frozen, stiff, but alive. I shall kill one for food and bring a cow to our barn. Christmas Eve. Our first Christmas apart. I look at the baby and thoughts keep running through my mind. What if he gets sick? Oh, be still. I won't listen. Suppose a wolf should... If I have a gun, why am I frightening myself with these horrible fancies? January. February. I've lost track of time. Last night, I left the baby alone and went outside. As I reached the corner of the barn, there stood a big timber wolf. I reached for my gun and I... I didn't have it. I didn't have it! I backed into the barn as he slowly closed the gap between us. As he was about to claw me, I slammed the barn door. As dawn broke, I looked out at the dugout where the baby was alone. The wolf was digging his way in. I don't know what happened after that, Charles. All I know is that I got into the dugout and got the gun and shot him. Shot him! <laughs> I'm just imagining. No one could get here. No one would come in this blizzard. Caroline. Oh, Caroline. Oh, Charles. Darling. Oh, darling. I came as quickly as I could. I know that. I know. They told me at the town site the Svensons had gone home and you were here alone. How could you do it? Do you suppose I care for anything in the world compared to you? You walked all the way from town. Ten miles in the blizzard. What do you think I'd do with you out here? Oh, your leg. How's your leg? It'll be as good as ever for spring plowing. Charles, we have a cow. A cow, Charles. A cow? Yes. I found her in the midst of a blizzard. What a triumph. What a joke to have a cow. After so many calamities, in spite of calamities, to have a cow. And you're home now, Charles. You're home. The baby. Where's the baby? He's sleeping. But wait till you see how big he's grown. 
after all he's been through, what you've been through, I'll make it up to you and him. I'll work harder than I ever worked before. Uh, Caroline, I have forty dollars. Forty dollars? We'll be able to buy seed to plant our wheat field again. Nothing will stop us now. Nothing. Look at the baby's face. Can't you see our future? The big white house with the green shutters and the acres of wheat fields. The fast driving teams and swift buggies. Oh, if he remembers it all, this life in the dugout, he'll only think of it as a brief moment to more prosperous and happy times. and James Hilton will return in a moment. And now, a word of advice about how to choose your Christmas cards. Probably no purchase you make is more important. For each Christmas card you send represents your taste. It represents you to your friends and loved ones, your business associates, your new acquaintances. So for this important purchase, go to one of the leading stores in town. One you've learned to trust for what is correct and in good taste. The friendly store where you choose your Hallmark card. Asked to see Hallmark Grandma Moses cards. Grandma Moses has painted Christmas scenes exclusively for Hallmark cards. There are several ways to buy Hallmark Grandma Moses Christmas cards. For only one dollar, you can get a box of 12 selected cards, and in each box is a large reproduction of one of her paintings suitable for framing. Look for the Hallmark box with a picture of Grandma Moses on the cover. Or you'll find a wide selection of Grandma Moses cards from which you can make individual selections. If you prefer to have your name imprinted, you'll also find Grandma Moses' cards in the Hallmark Gallery Artist album. I suggest you stop in tomorrow to make sure of getting cards you can send with pride, knowing they'll be shown with pride. Hallmark Grandma Moses' cards. Now, here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Anne Black. We were indeed lucky in having you with us tonight, giving us such a beautiful portrayal of a courageous, pioneering woman. It was a great pleasure for me, Mr. Hilton. I have looked forward to my appearance on the Hallmark Playhouse and my introduction to you. Of course, I need no introduction to Hallmark cards. I always find them perfect reminders for all occasions. After hearing Mr. Goss tonight, I'm awfully anxious to see those Grandma Moses cards. And I'm sure you'll find them to be everything that Frank said they were. Again, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. And I'd like to thank Sam Edwards for his fine portrayal of Charles. I hear you're having a doctor's story next week. Yes, next week we are proud to present that fine actor Edmund Gwen in the role of Dr. Serocold, a really memorable story by Helen Ashton. It tells of a village doctor with a great heart, a man who not only attended the physical ills of his patients, but offered them his warm philosophy and help in daily living. I hope you'll all be listening. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Anne Blythe appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures and can soon be seen starring with Robert Cummings in Free For All, a Universal International Picture. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Dr. Seracole starring Edmund Gwen and the week following Charles Coburn and Colonel Effingham's raid on the Hallmark Playhouse. See the two-page Hallmark Christmas card announcement in Life magazine on sale at your newsstand tomorrow. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.